That always helps here on sports at USA.net. So two powerhouses, Mr. Nalen, Cerritos and Cypress. Doan over at second base. And per usual, when she gets on first base, she's still in second. Stolen base number 18 on the season. Leads the OEC in stolen bases. Line drive, easy double play. I tell you what, you hit that one wickedly towards Marley Manalo, and then she picks it off and just flips the second base. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on base. As we head to the bottom of the first, it's Cypress Zero, Cerritos coming to the plate. To lead it off for Cerritos will be Macias, Basuto, and Velasquez will be the first three, and then Landeros will be in the hole. When you look at the defense for Cypress College, well, it's McPherson left, Jazzy Lopez in center, Jacobson over in right. Probably one of the better unnoticed infielders for Brad Pickler is Michaela Modis at third. Jalen Duarte, solid over there. Julia Doan, good at second base. And, of course, the one that nobody ever talks about, your first base person, Ashlyn Ortiz, who makes everybody look good in the infield. Tina Payne at the plate today and of course then I'm going to throw this at you now because I looked at Caitlin Reynolds and I looked at Emily Rush now I talked to a couple other people today and you know who I thought I was talking to Corey Nealon they said yeah Caitlin Reynolds numbers are as good as Emily Rush maybe better but and it went into the Corey Nealon diatribe so here's my question to you what does Caitlin Reynolds have to do to be in the same breath with Emily Rush I'll just keep winning Winning, 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 and coming in clutch when, when the team needs it. That's really the difference. That's what we talked about before the beginning of the season, is this team is probably more talented than last year's squad. It's just last year's squad had that, um, that thing that you can't really quantify, and you can't put that on paper, and that's what and Emily Rush was the person to lead them in that. And when you look at Cerritos, it's interesting because Cody tells me like she did earlier today, Mark, I'm never going to be the recruiter everybody else is. We start learning softball when we get together. You currently look at them in fourth place in their conference behind Long Beach, who's having an incredible year. Mount Sac, who is Mount Sac. And then you sit there with El Camino surprisingly in third and Cody breathing down everybody's neck. Macias starting things off. Tremendous at the plate, Mark. 413 average, which leads the team. 506 on base percentage. That's just two of the categories offensively that she leads. Moda sneaks in from third. Ortiz from first. Shot to sure-handed shortstop. Duarte gets it over there. Throws it a little short, and that's why I said about Ortiz. Bails everybody out. One up, one down. It's going to bring up Baserto. Baserto solid at the plate, 328. And you mentioned, Mark, that they're sitting in Cyprus. Uh, Cerritos is sitting in fourth place in the South Coast Conference. I don't think that matters to any Cerritos Falcon team. No, because usually at the back end of the season, they do what they have to do to get in the playoffs. Exactly. I Last think year. it's now, what, 17 consecutive years that yeah. Cody has been in the playoffs? Yeah, and the 2014 was the last time they won a conference championship, but that hasn't mattered. Last year, they finished in third place. High and tight for a ball. And much to the chagrin of Brad Pickler, <laughs> I had picked Cerritos to win the championship last year. High and away for a ball. You said this Cypress team could be better than the teams in the past. Do you mean defensively or no, just, overall? just overall a better team than last year, so, so to speak. So it just seems like they have more. Swung through and missed. Maybe not as much power because they're missing that with Emily, but the extra bases is what they have. They have more speed than last year on the base paths. And they have Reynolds returning, Ortiz returning. 
and Duarte returned on in the infield. Down her way for a ball. Along with Gomez behind the plate, this is a team that, you know, should be better than last year. Jacobson played a lot. She started but didn't have that role as a, a go-to player this year. She does. On the way, Tina Payne behind the plate today for Brad Pickler. And, Mark, when you look at the Falcon squad, again, they have returners that played well. They lost a whole bunch of talented sophomores from last year's team. But at 14-7, to seven, this is another year that they're going to be scary if they get to the playoffs. Or I'm going to say when they get to the playoffs. Square on that one, taken down and away. Yeah, I mean, it's real interesting, too, when you look at it because – it's, I mean, if you look at the conference right now, Corey, you go down to Compton, everybody overall is above 500. Yeah. So you would have to think that the RPI, which everybody looks at, has to be strong because everybody in the top five are winning programs. They're going to get at least six in the playoffs this year. Okay, five. Yeah, I stopped at five. I stopped at Compton. Taken for a strike. Yeah, they'll get five in. Yeah, if everybody finishes the way they are, Long Beach 19 and 4, Mount Sac 19 and 6, El Camino 15 and 9, 14 and 7 for Cerritos, 15 and 9 for Conference. Even if they're at 500, you would think those five would get in. Swung on and missed. Drop ball by Reynolds. Two and two's account. One out. First inning here at Cerritos College at Nancy Kelly Field. And Velasquez with one home run on the season. Just misses the corner. Asked Cody about Caitlin Reynolds, and she said, a tenacious competitor. She said she's good in the circle, but Mark, she has the heart of gold of being a pitcher. Taken back of the middle. Doan flips it to second for one. That's all they're going to get. So Velasquez on on a fielder's choice. Get the lead runner right there on four to six for out number two. Landeros now coming up. Playing right field for the Falcons. So you've got five teams coming out of Cody's conference. Oh, yeah. Five for sure, no doubt. And the surprise team this year is Compton. Fouled away. Surprise team in the state of California, not just the South Coast Conference. It's the state that they're the surprise team. Would you not also say that Megan's got a surprise team over at Long Beach? I mean, they're 8-0 playing in the same conference with Mount Sac and Cerritos. Hasn't lost they, a conference they, they game. They should be here. Okay. They should be at that position. They should be. Last year, they should have been as well. Okay. Fouled away. So you're, you're saying now they've reached the potential they should be at. Yeah. Okay. Mount Sac started off a little rocky. Now they're Mount Sac again. Yeah, they'll be there at the end. Plus the rankings in the RPI won't let them be there at the end also. Strike three called. So Reynolds does what Reynolds does. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on base. As we head to the top of the second, it's Cypress Zero, Cerrito Zero here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Corey Nalen, the old guy, John Ed Ford feeling old once we set things up. Brad Pickler comes wandering over. Nothing else to do. You know? Beautiful day like today. Yeah, Brad hanging out with Corey and I over here. What are you looking up over there, Ed? Ed look at Ed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the mechanic. He's the mechanic for Can us. I give a shout out? Sure. I want to give a shout out to my buddy Tom Work. 
my college buddy who's watching the game in Bakersfield. All right. His daughter Lisa played for me in 1997. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Tom Work, Tom, we're glad you're watching the game. Good friend of Brad Pickler. State champions in 97. I kind of I can't carry Tom through uh, school at Cal State Fullerton. Oh, yeah. I see. His diplomacy should say his name plus my name. So I, 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 I see, Tom, that you, your success and your brilliancy that goes on right now is all due to another head coach maneuver by Brad Pickler. Another Titan. <laughs> Well, once again, we bring up Titans that get degrees with, what is it? Is it is that a magic school over there? Yeah, it is magic. You get a magical education. Wow. So Modus at third base, 333. I like this kid playing third base. I think she's an excellent third base person. Up on top of the box. And, of course, most people ask why hitters do that. It's usually to take away a breaking pitch or something else. Got to be quick with the hands and the hips when you stand that close. Wide stance by Modus. Takes it right down Broadway. Beautiful pitch by Carranza. I mean, Modus wanted to step in, too. It couldn't decide. Tried to extend. And it rolled up right on her. One and two. Had that front foot moving just a little quick. For a strikeout. Ortiz comes up. Beautiful glove work over at first base. This is the thing people forget about a first base person. How many infielders they save. Ortiz takes a strike. And, Corey, I think that's it's one of those positions that nobody really talks about. If you don't snag it, everybody thinks there's something wrong with it. When you do get that nice little pickup at first way you're supposed to, Ortiz fouls it off the end of the bat. Nothing above your hands, okay? Nothing above your hands. Solid first base person for Brad. 373 hitter, four doubles, 13 walks. 0-2 count, Granza brings it. A little high, one and two, one out. Pretty simple, okay? Pretty simple. 22nd start in the circle this year, Mark. 14 and seven, all of Cyprus, or excuse me, Cerritos' win and all losses. On a way. 131 innings pitched so far, 30, 72 strikeouts, 20 walks with a 2.24 earned run average. Deep fly ball, the dead center field, just short of the wall. And that is one long single by Ortiz. And the speed in the outfield for Cerritos allowed that to stay just a single for Ortiz. Jasmine Macias got to the fence quickly. And again, if it was up a little bit higher, would have got caught in that jet stream and would have been out. Hit number two for Cypress in the game. Brings up Jacobson. Solid right fielder, solid outfielder. You could put her in any of the three positions in the outfield. She squares. Everybody moving on the play. Fontella in left. Macias in center. Landeros in right. For Cerritos, offer again for a bunt. Carbajal over at first, Jocelyn Doan at second. Marley Manalo at short. 
was the first time there has actually been Doan from one team and Doan from another team, both playing second base. Taken for a strike. I found that sort of interesting. Yeah, first thing you think of relations, but no relations. Jocelyn, at second for Cerritos, went to Walnut High School. Former Mustang. On the corner, waist high for a strike. Two and two's account. And you talk about Walnut High School, they produced some talent. Devette Williams, who went to Irvine, actually played basketball at Irvine after her softball at Walnut. Michelle Dedona went to Walnut High School. Lazy fly ball to right field, taken there by Landeros. Nadia has no problem with that. Route number two. Also, Tara Midget, of course, will always mention. <laughs> well, that middle player didn't want to play softball, did she? No, she did want to play softball. Oh, okay. I thought she was coaxed into it. I know she was supposed to go into the family business. No, no, no. She always, she wanted to play softball. Oh, okay. And away. Garanz is a rise pitch. Hasn't really been there except for one swing. Elizabeth Gomez up. Designated player today. With two outs, a dangerous hitter. She's experienced. In a second, Corey, we're going to get the voice of Northern California softball on the air with us. <laughs> he should be. He should be. Randy should be here. Corey's going, wait a minute. You getting the same thing I'm getting? <laughs> Ed Ford coming on the air with Corey and myself. Of course, you listen to Ed. Always on the air with us here on SportsNetUSA.net and Chargers Live when we do games for Cyprus. Gomez waits. And even though the rice pitch is in there, Corey, she's been peening that one right down the middle and nobody from Cyprus has jumped all over that pitch yet. Yeah, she's got the one strikeout on a rise, but it was one of those where it was way out of the strike zone and it's a beautiful pitch. Gomez takes it back up the middle, a little flip to second to get the lead runner, and that'll do it. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on base. As we head to bottom of two, while well, we're sitting at zero, it's Cerritos zero, Cypress zero, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. And, of course, as soon as I say the voice of Northern California is here, he left. He left. What did he do? Head for Northern California? Where he thinks the people are friendlier, the softball teams are better, the power is up there. Of course, that's to the contradiction of the man to my left, Corey Nalen, who will tell you how the OEC is the best conference in Southern California, followed by, well, one of many Southern California conferences. Because, Corey, when you look at it, anybody can win it. You look right now at Fullerton College. Talking to Cody, she said if they don't win it all this year, they're never going to win it all this year. Number one in RPI, Cypress number two, Mount Sac three, Palomar four, Long Beach five, OCC a surprising six, and then El Camino number seven in RPI. I'm surprised on that one. I think these are the two best conferences in the state um, simply because of the uh, – program histories of all, but you mentioned Fullerton, OCC, Cypress, Golden West. All four teams will make the conference, or make the playoffs. Well, guys, I, I hate to spoil your fun. This is what we like. These are the new 20th anniversary. We've been streaming games for 20 years here on SportsNetUSA.net. 
Some people get two gold stars because they've been here since the beginning. So let's uh, let's get our new attire on, gentlemen. I thought it, I thought I was a general. I was feeling really good for a second. You are a general, <laughs> General Mark. I thought yes, I finally made it. <laughs> I like this. I do too. I do too. Now, so Manalo comes up. We have one for Mr. Robles, so he never wears that one cap ever again. <laughs> Caitlin Reynolds feels that one he's quickly. Been looking for work. Ryan Osborne gets a cap. Wow. Ryan will take that. The franchise. He <laughs> should get a cap. Stars. I should give him the. I should put four stars on his cap. <laughs> you should. <laughs> you should. Do that. Really big ones. Look like he's a general of the Air Force or something. Well, Ed, what you should do is get him one of them giant size hats because if he still has an entourage, he'll have about eight heads that have to get in there at the same time. That's true. It's the family now. That's right. Family man. Pantella goes back. Randall says, you know, I did it once. Watch me do it again. And, Corey, that's one thing that you, you have to talk about her is that not only can she pitch from the circle, she can play defender from the circle. Yeah, that's one of the things that Cypress has been, he wouldn't say lucky, but has experience of players in the circle that field their position extremely well. And we've also seen that on the Cerrito side also. It's one of the things that fundamentals are so key to be successful. And when you master those, you have good programs. And Cody is a proponent of that. Carbajal comes up. Celeste playing first base for Cody today. Fouls it away. And I know coaches don't like to be praised. They don't like to get pat on the back. But like I was telling Cody about our team, all the women that we've talked to enjoy playing for her and think they've learned from her. Uh, she told me she didn't think that was necessarily true. <laughs> Carbajal just loops it off. Ortiz goes back and gets it. And boy, it's been easy and quick in this first inning. Three up, three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. As we head to three, well, we're sitting at zero. Cypress zero, Cerrito zero, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. And it's funny Ed brings out the hats because we were just talking about 20 years, Ed, this weekend, just sitting around, doing nothing, eating lunch. Actually, we were eating lunch. And Mark and I were talking about it's been 20 years since we've been doing SportsNetUSA.net. It doesn't seem like it. Well, well I don't know. Today After the game when I'm unloading the equipment. <laughs> then it seems I'm like in, it. I'm in the high desert and it's windy and cold. Well, I feel like it's been 60, maybe 80 <laughs> years. But, yeah. Now, Corey, can you remember, we're Mark, the first game we ever did at sportsnetusa.net. We were talking about it. Was it the Kia Classic? Oklahoma? Yes, it was the Kia Classic. Oklahoma versus Illinois. Here we go. That was the first game on sportsnetusa.net. And let us add that we also did some other games like Oklahoma, Nebraska, and so on and so forth. And we're talking the D1 schools. You know, Oklahoma, that school that's won uh, the national championship uh, how many times in a row? So. Yeah, and, and, and it's really funny because Corey and I were talking about that. We actually did when we said the 20 years because I had my Vanguard University basketball T-shirt on, <laughs> and we did our 16-year anniversary with we did the national championship for the NAIA, and Corey and I were talking. We mentioned the first game, and Corey said, first game? I said, you and Ed. At the key, and Corey goes, what was that? I said, Kia Classic is what the name of it was. Here on sports at USA.net. Yeah, that's before it, uh, I guess it's kind of morphed into the, or transitioned into the Judy Garmin uh, tournament now. But, yep, it was the Kia Classic. Classic spelled with a K to go along with Kia. So what you could say is we had a little bit of experience in launching Oklahoma softball to the stratosphere. Yeah, we did. 
Corey and I did Oklahoma Nebraska softball. Tina Payne comes up. Tina, easy little ground to Natalie over at third. She makes a nice flip over there for the out. I can't remember her name, Corey, but there was a player on um, on Illinois. She was a Fullerton uh, product, and she went to um, oh gosh, what's the Catholic girls' school Rosary. in Fullerton? Rosary. Yeah, she was Rosary High uh, graduate, and I cannot remember her name. I think she played outfield for for Rosary, but she was on the Illinois team then. So. Well, here, let me be one of the SIDs for one of those schools. Since you guys don't know their names, uh, you can take your headsets off now, and I'll find somebody who does. That's the attitude it was for the Kia Classic. I remember when the SID looked at you and I and said, if you make one mistake, I will yank you off the air. It was like, okay, I'm not saying anybody's names. McPherson. Down the line, right over third. She'll turn, head for second. Easy stand-up double. Well, I think, Mark, why they were so edgy, so to speak, was because uh, they had taken the stream, if you recall, and it was being broadcast on all those stations. The audio was being broadcast on all those stations in the the Sooner Radio Network. Yeah, I, I can remember him telling us how many stations were doing it and then how many people would be listening. And Corey and I just stared at each other like, oh, my God. Yeah, with fun times. Yeah, we had uh, less equipment then. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> A lot less. It was streaming only. Dwarty comes up. A little inside to her. Cypress now with three hits in this game. Dwarty flew out to center field her first time up. Takes that for a ball. And also to remind people, simultaneously, we are streaming Santa Ana hosting Southwestern, two teams that we've had on SportsNetUSA.net numerous times. Ranza brings it down the middle for a strike. Albert Robles and Noah handling that. Aaron? Yeah, I think you're right, Mark. Aaron Jones? Yeah, and I, Corey, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you credit for that. It it saw me hand him the phone went gave me credit for it. But my partner Corey Naylor was looking it up when uh, Ed was talking. Dewarty takes that for a strike. Two twos account. Granza brings it. On the fist, just fouls it off on that. It's interesting because I seem to remember as one of those many parents that came up who I think recognized one of us from doing the high school sports. Yeah. Take it right there. Throw it a second. Not in time. A sharp line drive by Dwarty. And once again, picked off by Macias in center field. Cypress is hitting the ball well, striking it well. Just two people. McPherson with a double went down the line. Pass Baserto. Manalo's at second base. Doan at, uh, excuse me, at Manalo's at short. Doan at second. Carbajal at first. Speaking of Doan, Doan for Cypress is at the play. Good second base person there. Her and Dwarty are complementary to each other at short and second. And I think what's interesting, you brought it up, Corey, she leads the OEC in steals. When you sort of look at it, you don't 
think of her. She's not that petite player, and you think, wait a minute, she leads the team in stolen bases? Down and away. And it's not like it's you're leading the team with five stolen bases. And, Mark, she also handles that bat well for bunting. So she's well, deceptive and uh, probably surprises a lot of people with her speed and her ability to handle that bat. Hit down the right field line. She said, you know, Mr. Pavlovich, let me hit one over by the camera. I know before you have stuck your hand up and knocked that ball down. It's this hand, John, the one that's crippled. <laughs> No, it was, John. Actually, it was a line drive hit. Ed Cantillo was hit here. I stuck in my left hand and tried to cup it. It was it was a shot. And uh, everybody in the Cerritos dugout thought my hand was broken. And they literally did. A trainer came over and said, you okay? I said, yeah, I'm fine. Still in there and handed me a five-pound bag of ice while I was calling the game. It was like, what the heck? Carranza. Two and two. Three and two. Looked like a, they had a two. It looks like a two, but it's three and two was the count. And so she walks, and Corey, that was a close one to take. Mm. Corey my, thinks it was one you shouldn't have taken. As my aunt Cricket would say. Mm. So there is her 17th walk of the season. That brings up Caitlin Reynolds. So your obligatory cliche inserted here is she can help her cause with the base hit. A talented softball player, talented athlete, talented student athlete. Two time and Carranza didn't like that. Yeah, yeah. She just looked back and said, what I gotta do? Well, umpire called it. Umpire called it high. It'll look from where our perspective is. We're down the third baseline. We can judge if they're high and low. We can't see if they're on the plate. And uh, Mr. Nalen would have swung at that one. I swung at anything. Oh, okay. So now I can't use him as a judgment call. <laughs> you can't. Reynolds is one of those players. Two times, 3C, 2A. Actually, I'm sorry. The C, how many C's in the California Community College three, Coaches Association? Three C. Whatever. Two A's. Two time player of the week. It's the C, 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 A, A. Yeah. That's three. But then it's uh, three C, two A, C, F, A. Well, I don't know about the re uh, that rest fast, of it. Fast Pitch Association and coaches and all that. Anyway, <laughs> too many letters. Okay, Brad Pickler calls a 3-1 home run here. Okay. We shall see Reynolds has won this season. But this, Ed, the ball flies out of the stadium. We've been here too many times not to see it just zoom out of Nancy Kelly Field. Reynolds looks at that one that Corey said, if you're going to hit one, that's the pitch. That might have been the pitch because that was beautiful. Karanda comes back and knew she needed one and didn't guess, but knew she wasn't going to swing. Infield deep. Down off the plate. Three and one. Came Three and one. Shins. Runner at second. Runner at first. No score. Top of the third. Cypress trying to scratch the scoreboard. Foul ball and just short of the fence in foul territory. I was seeing if Brad had the distance right. It would have been a routine fly ball. Three and two, runners will be going. Two outs. Base hit, could score two. Fisted. Good pitch by Carranza. She might want to go there one more time. Again, Reynolds is waiting on one, waiting to pull one. So if she gets something inside, it's coming our way. 
Well, you look at the outfield deeper in left, straight away in center, shallow in right. So she takes it to right and gets it on the ground. There could be two scoring. She takes it to center field. Easy fly ball. You don't even move out there as Macias says, I've got it for out number three. No runs. Big double. No errors. And two left on base. As we head to bottom of three, it's Cypress Zero, Cerrito Zero, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Ed, I don't know if you have it in front of you. Barnaby, but you look at the rankings. Corey just said now the South Coast Conference, if you look at their standings, he thinks they'll get five teams in. Let's say the season were to end today and the numbers are similar. Are you going to look at them too and go with the five for the South Coast Conference, Long Beach, Mount Sac, El Camino, Cerritos, and Compton? Or do you think they'll come up short? That's a darn good question. I, I'm going to decline to answer at uh, this, quite at this moment in time. But but I, I shall answer in a couple of seconds here. Okay, so Ed's going to look at that. And, of course, you look at the rankings. We've already talked about the rankings. San Mateo, number one. Palomar, number two. This is where I really start to get confused. Cyprus, three. Fuller to College, four. Consumnus, Consumnus number five. San Jose Delta, number six. Mount Sac, seven. West Valley, eight. Long Beach City College, ninth with OC. Come on, guys. RPI is flipsy, topsy, turvy compared to rankings. That's why there should be no rankings. <laughs> it's a popularity contest, actually, Mark. Well, we'll have more when we get to... Uh in between innings, so to speak. Bell Casanova. Up. Designated player today for Cody's team. No score. Three hits for Cypress. No hits yet for your Cerritos Falcons. Freshman out of Lakewood High School. Two walks this season, scored twice. Cody coaching at third, or dad Bud over at first. So it is a family affair here at Cerritos College. Casanova, her minor is natural sciences. Wants to be an electrician. Reynolds rocks, off speed. Reynolds quickly out of the circle, jumps all over that, and makes a nice throw to first base to get Casanova. I think Casanova paused as it left her bat, thinking it might go foul. Allowed Reynolds, who has three putouts thus far in the first three innings. That brings up Doan playing second base for Cerritos. Four players. Doan squares, can't pull that one in. Four players who are former Mustangs from Walnut, Mark. So good pipeline. Former player here at Cerritos. Head coach there now. And you look at the way that Dunes in the box, Corey. She goes way back. Slight build when you look at her way back. Leans back like she's cranking it up. Straight before she starts. Then she'll lean back and coil. And swings right through that one. Beautiful off-speed pitch. Strikeout number two for Reynolds today. So Brad says to his defense, okay, everybody needs to back up in the outfield as that brings back up Macias. Grounded out to shorter first time up. 
Leads the team in hits with 26, also six doubles. Tries to square, doesn't get anything. Her 24 stolen bases, Mark, are in the top three. You're actually number two in the state. That one just a little high. Reynolds looks at the umpire like, where was it? So neither pitcher for these teams in the circle are happy with what the umpires are calling. Off the plate. So we mentioned uh, Julia Doan at second base for Cyprus who has 18 stolen bases now. That was eighth in the state. Now we have the number two. Hit there. Backhanded by Modus. Quick throw over to third. I'll tell you what, this kid can play. I love the way she plays the bases. She says, thank you, Mr. Pavlovich, for that one. Three up, three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody, nobody left on base. As we head to four, we are moving right along. It's Cypress Zero, Cerrito Zero, here on Sportsnet USA. Dot net. And that's how you know you're good at third base because she could have taken one step over, picked that up, and thrown. But a speedy runner with Macias going down the first baseline, she decides to backhand it and looked it all the way into the glove, then raises and fires over. Well, Ed, I asked you that Jeopardy question. I didn't know if you were going to give me an answer sooner or later. So, Well, let's see if we can get this up on the screen. If, going by RPI... If the playoffs were to happen right now, the regionals, Fullerton would be the number one seed. <laughs> I heard Brad in my right, my left ear when you were talking to me. I went everywhere. You went everywhere? Yeah. So they would get I'm the. A, uh, I'm a graduate the, alumni the, of Mount Sac. Play-in game. Okay. Whoever was the uh, lowest, <laughs> however you want to put that, you know, the, the lowest seed left surviving. Number two, according to RPI right now, if you go on the uh, 3C2A website, you can see the RPI. Cypress would be number two. They would get another one of the play-in teams. Number three would be at Palomar. And if we go with five teams out of the SCC, then Compton would be uh, the number 13 team. Mount Tack would be four. They would play Moore Park because they can't play Compton, so you have to switch them around. Western State North. Long Beach against San Diego, El Camino against Citrus, LA Mission, which has been coming on strong. Mm, they might play Cerritos, but this time, you know, it wouldn't be here at Cerritos. And OCC at number eight, playing number nine, Bakersfield. We'll get to, uh, and then you can see who might uh, qualify as a uh, play-in teams. So it'll, it'll be interesting. It depends on, on the conferences. Are they going to take two teams from the Inland Empire Conference because those teams don't really have San Jacinto has a great record Modus smokes it and her counterpart over at third thought she had it she makes a nice play with the glove Corey she does Pacerto did a great job going down getting it and it was sharply hit the throw was a little bit off but still should have been caught E3 thank you One of the few times Corey Nealing gives an error, so we'll, you know. It, that is what, is that, the, is, that the, is that the second error in 20 years? I believe so. Yeah, that's why you got two stars on your hat now. One for each error you've called. <laughs> and it'll be another 20 before they get another two. How Everybody gets that? a hit. Ortiz is up with a runner at first over there on an error. Tries to get it. Official scorekeeper also gave that an error. So all of us were right. Of course, while you and Brad were chumming up about Cal State, I can't get my degree Fullerton. No, we weren't talking about Cal State Fullerton. We, he thought, you know, I was always pumping up the South, South Coast Conference. I heard that, too. I heard that. Of course, you got to when you went to Mount Sac and, you know. <laughs> Into center field, coming in, nice little catch. I tell you, here's the thing, Corey. You look at Macias, who gets a great jump on the ball in center field for Cody. She comes in quickly. There's no hesitation as an outfielder when she goes after the ball. 
This kid looks like a natural center fielder. Sotelo, Sotelo was the outfield center field last couple years, right? Yeah. Okay. Couldn't remember if she was second or, or center. No. Try to drop down a bunt. Foul. Center was not uh, Sotelo. Okay, so Sotelo was second base. Okay. Yeah, Sotelo played second. Can't remember who played uh, center. But again, the middle of her of her defense has always been pretty stout here in Cerritos. Especially when you're looking at one down one ninety down the line. So Jacobson squares the bunt, doesn't do it. So Carbajal at first, Doan at second, Manalo at short, Basurdo at third. Velasquez behind the plate. Once again, drops a bunt. Baserto backs up. Flip over to first. The runner is safe. And that'll be a base hit. Last year, Mark, it was Alisa Caps. Oh, that's who it was. Small mm -hmm. little thing. Yes, very fast, good bunter, a lot of speed in the outfield to catch up to the balls. And she is playing uh, any IA ball. She is at... Um, we get a timeout by Cerritos. Ed's looking to see where Caps is playing this year. Long conversation in the circle. Brad a couple times. Showed bunt. Two runners on. One out. Here in the top of the fourth. Cerritos, no runs, four hits, no errors. I mean, Cypress, no runs, four hits, no errors. Cerritos, no runs, no hits, one error. I believe, Mark, that uh, Caps is playing for the University of St. Catherine. That's uh, located in Encinitas, California, San Diego County. So, uh, and they will be facing next week. They're going to be going up against, or the week after, they're going up against uh, Park University, which is being coached by uh, Josh Musselman. Oh, there you go. Assistant here and coach her. So that'll be quite a... That'll, that'll be, that'd a, be a fun game, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be a fun game. John, an excellent coach, nice man. Showed us a lot of kindness when he was here yep. at Cerritos. Had, had a chance to move up to the head coaching slot, and, you know, you, you can't pass those up because you only get so many opportunities of those uh, in your career. That's true. That's true. One and one's the count. The Liz. Kind of like waiting for Patty Gasso to retire. Yeah. It's going to happen for a long time. Yeah, it's not going to. Liz drives it in the alley. Brad's got him wheeling. One run in. Brad's going to hold the second run as Liz gets a long single for an RBI. So Liz drives in the first run of the game. Going to get a designated runner for her. Dempsey Wood going over to first base for Liz. And, and we saw Liz the last time we were doing a game at Cyprus. Went to second, went down, slid in. People were giving her a little, hey, what was that slide you made? Head first. She did say she felt a slight pull, not saying that she's injured. 
but I think Brad knows how important she is to this team, doesn't want to do anything to affect anything else as the year goes on. Cypress up the board first. Runners at the corner. Jacobson over at third. Woods, who's the designated runner for Gomez at first. Hit, center field, runner's going to tag. They tag the throw, Holmes not even close on a sacrifice fly made there by Tina Payne. Two runs in yeah, on that sack fly. That is so important that in that situation that you do something to help your team. Now, grounded to where they can't make the play and you score a run. Hit a sacrifice fly, but what you don't want to do, obviously, is hit a pop-up in the infield, and but that's not what happened. So good play there by Cypress. McPherson comes up. So a big single by Gomez drives in a run. Payne sacrifices on the fly, gets run number two in on a fly ball to center field. And that brings up McPherson here in the top of the fourth. Two nothing, Cypress. Bunt dropped. Down the first baseline, just goes foul. Sweet looking butt. Wow. That would have been big trouble. That was like that ice cream sundae with, you know, a little chocolate on there, maybe a couple nuts, whipped cream thrown on top. It was that pretty. One and two's the count. Fouled away, staying alive. And it's hard for and it's hard for a batter to come back and catch up. Ooh, everybody, even the hitter, just sort of went. Uh, I think that might be a, mm, McPherson said maybe it's not. So McPherson fouls that off. Corey, McPherson even looked at the umpire and that went like, did you call that a strike? Well, she looked down, was about ready to turn around and walk around, walk back to the dugout because that was inning over. Easter Bunny helping McPherson with this one. That one's going to drop just, oh, it looked like it was going to oh, go nice. in a nice Very break nice. on the ball by Marley Manalo, who Here's comes the back and picks it up. As Mark said, nice break, and she makes that over, over the shoulder catch and retires the side. Two runs on two hits, one big air. And that gives Cerritos the lead in the game. It's Cerritos. Oh, it's Cypress the lead in the game. It's Cypress, too. Trying to help Cody as much as I can. Cerritos Zero here on Sportsnet USA.net. Got some scores for you guys. Final score, Golden West beats L.A. Harbor by a score of 6-2. to two. Cuesta, uh, Janelle used to be a coach here. At uh, Cerritos, one of the, and also played for the Falcons, played for Cody. She was on she, that 2008 championship that's team. Right, and she has her team going, 9-5 to five victory over Canyons, and maybe, maybe they can get into the playoffs this year. Grossmont has been playing some softball lately. They, you know, they were losing every game. Now they're starting to win. 11 nothing victory over um, Victor Valley. Looks like that they're going to split that series. Saddleback beating uh, San Diego Mesa by a score of 7-3. to three. That's in the bottom of the fifth. Uh, Santa Ana losing to Southwestern. That is 4 to nothing, And that game is also on sportsnetusa.net. You might be al also be able to see it on the uh, Santa Ana Athletics webpage. 
And in the second game of uh, Cuesta and Canyons, it's three to one in the first Canyons over Cuesta. No games going on in the uh, in Northern Cal today. Surprising Golden West College keeps winning. Yeah, they 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 have a shot at uh, you know at being uh, the fourth team out of the uh, conference. Fullerton and Orange Coast looking good. The problem Minnesota. is that they uh, their RPI amazingly. Um, Sinaigo Canyon's RPI is their 14th in RB, RPI. That's, I'm sorry, that's, sorry. Up the middle, Reynolds takes it off the shin or knee and is just limping in the circle. And Mark, if you were scoring at home, how would you score that? That's a hit. She didn't have an opportunity to get her glove down. It was hit with speed, so it's no air. It's going to be a base hit on that. What? No, it went off, bounced off Reynolds over to third, then to first. So is she going to call that one five three on the put out? Well, did they get her? Yeah. Oh, one five three. I I thought she was safe. Oh, well we will then. Corey Nealon's got that as a no, one I don't five know. three. I'm, I'm just messing with you. No, that's okay. I actually thought Corey. That she had made it. Umpire calls her out. So, and if you you two remember uh, the last game with uh, Santiago and Cypress over at Cypress College, Reynolds got uh, hit twice. Yeah, by, both uh, times. Shots coming back at her, and it looked like she kind of kicked out as well, trying to stop it. It would be a blow if she wouldn't be able to stay out there. But again, softball players are tough. So. Well, certainly you would, you know, Brad does not have the luxury that he had last year where Reynolds could come in for Emily Rush. This year it's pretty much Reynolds, you know, it's, it's her show. Kind of like with uh, Cerritos. Yeah, all 22 starts this year. Ben Carranza in the circle. All 14 wins, all seven losses. So my partner watching the play as I watch the injured player. <laughs> Velasquez, criminal, wants to go into law enforcement. Ooh. Well, have you seen the way John drives? That's why. She saw John pull in the parking lot and said, I'm changing my major. High and away. Not quite as sunny as it's supposed to be today. No, a little overcast right now. We'll get the official prediction of rain or not from John a little later on. Two and two. Strike three. Everybody asked how she was. I guess she uh, came up with an answer on that one. Let's bring up Landero's mark. On the season hitting 254 coming into this game. 15 hits, scored eight times. Reynolds now with three strikeouts. First strikeout was against Landeros in the first inning. Ortiz deep at first, Doan at second. Duarte, not far from the grass, it's short. Modus, even with the bag, over at third. Cody Murray in her 23rd season. Did we ever find out how many wins she had at LA Valley? No. No, we did not. Doan gets a little number and throws her out. You'll have to ask next time she comes out here, Corey. I, you know, she probably won't tell you. <laughs> probably not. Three up, three down. She's too modest. 
No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. After four complete, it's Cyprus 2, Cerrito 0 here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Of course, Ed letting us know that Cap is now playing in the NAIA down in the San Diego region. So uh, nothing wrong with that. Set X center fielder for uh, Cerritos. Oh, okay. The one you were talking about earlier today, trying to remember who it was. And, of course, you see in the fence out here at Nancy Kelly Field in snow white letters compared to the rest of state tournament appearances, 2023, they were here that last year. They were close. Ed, you and I went out and watched a lot of the games. Corey, you were there for the state championships. Cerritos was that close yeah. to getting into the finals last year. Yeah, they had Palomar on the ropes. I mean, they had Palomar, I'm not going to say beat, but again, on the ropes, and they just couldn't knock him out. I mean, they were, they were there. And then they come back and, and lose to Cypress and Cypress advance. But it's one of those things that. Is that where I got her? Brad's letting us know she got it in the knee. Brad, that's the second time because she got hit. Last time we were out doing your game, a ball came back and hit her. Brad Picker letting us know that uh, she says she's doing okay. Caught it off the knee. Cypress. Two to nothing. Cold weather. John never gave us that weather report, so. John's gonna tell us it's cloudy. Hide right away. First matchup between these teams. Cypress won nine to one in five innings. Wardy takes that for a strike. The lineage of shortstops for Brad Pickler. Corey, it seems like he gets a shortstop that can play all the time. Yeah, that's a glam. That's one of the glamour positions in the sport. But it is a it's a player of the year position for Cyprus. Wardy once again center field. That's where she's played all day long. She flies out again. And Carranza does a nice job of changing. She does. She does not a not a flamethrower out there in the circle. But what she does is she throws a fastball, but her changeup and off-speed stuff is so good that it accelerates that fastball. And she's known, especially in this game, to hit her spots. Doan tries to lay a bunt, fouled off. Shaking her head, a little upset at herself. Sardo coming in from third. She'll stay about four feet in front of the bag at third base. Walk in on the pitch. And that's one thing about anybody who's ever played the game of softball. If you're a third base person, you have to be fearless because you have to come in on that bunt, and if somebody can handle a bat, boy howdy, I hope you can duck. Bunt dropped down, Baserta comes over, quick throw, Doug! They're gonna call it safe at first. Doan gets a base hit. Corey Nealon sort of smiled at me on that one. Ed, I don't know if you got that on instant replay over at first. Nope. It was close, but again, closing speed by Doan, halfway through, she picks up and accelerates, and that was an, that's what enabled her to beat that throw. Reynolds now comes up. Doan takes off. Reynolds goes through. Doan easily steals second base. Nice little head slide on that one. Beats the throw that gets tagged on her back. Steal number 19. Brad's always got his people thinking about the next thing to do. Go, 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 go. 
Dillon sees it go down, takes a big lead. Brad keeps her at second. Caitlin has 18 RBI this season. Looking for 19. Now would you say Carenza is sneaky fast? Because you say she changes speeds so well. Yeah, her location is really never the same twice. Even on that those pitches for the first out, on the outside part of the plate, it went high, lower, and lower. Hit down the left field line. That's going to be foul. Like that pitch there, Caitlin Reynolds is such a good hitter that she was enabled to foul that off. But Carranza, you notice, went a little bit more outside and slowed that down. Did you look at Carranza in the circle? Slender young woman. Fly ball to right field. Doan's tagging, hitting for third. They're not going to get her. Doan easily makes it there as Nadia Landeros picks that off in right field. So, again, you notice she came with a little bit more heat this time, but it was up out of the strike zone. And because it was up, Reynolds could not extend and just pops it up. Modus comes up, struck out her first time up, then got on on an air. Fouls it off down the right field line. Michaela, psychology major, and this pitch on the inside part of the plate. Two runs, six hits, no errors for Cypress. Out to right field again. Easy catch in the outfield, plays well for Cody. Nadia Landero springs that one in. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on base. As we head to bottom of five, Cypress two, Sarita zero, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Corey Nalen, Ed Ford, John on the call. But I was going to say, Mark, what you like about Carranza in, in the circle is it seems like she throws a dead ball. It's like there's there's been a few solid hits in Cypress. You know, they always hit solidly. But her outs, especially the last two pitches, they were in pretty good spots. They were up high enough that you can't get around on it and bring it down. But once it connected with the bat, it just died. It just, okay. And that's what you like about a pitcher like that who's not a blazer but understands how to throw a ball. And when you say not a blazer, it's just like Caitlin Reynolds isn't a blazer for Cypress. Yes or no? I uh, give you her sort a little, of gave me the look. I give her a little bit more power. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I don't think she's a blazer. She'll get three, maybe four strikeouts in a yeah, game. Yeah, not in the classic style. So I'll, I'll agree with that. Okay. Yeah, I'll go with that. She's not a blazer in the classic style that, you know, you see pitchers out there that just, yeah, they're going to beat you with the heat. And you're not going to see that much of it in, in community college because people like to work with projects instead of coming here and being dominant. Infield comes in. Manalo comes up to the play. Grounded back to the circle. In at the corners, Modus at third, Ortiz at first, down and away for a ball. Normal depth for Duarte at short, Doan at second. Outfield in a few steps. Marley fouls it off down the first baseline. Wants to be a physical therapist. 22 RBI this season, leads the team, no home runs. Or excuse me, she's got two home runs in 22 RBI. That's shortstop. From Walnut High School. 
over towards us. Bow. And you talked about the lineage of people you know that played at Walnut High School. Oh, yeah. The vet Williams was one who we talked about, went to Irvine, but played basketball there. She was a shortstop there. Jenny Fredrickson also went to Ohio State. She was one of those players who kind of elevated Ohio State in their softball program and say, oh, wait, we can play this sport. And she was one of those first players back in the 90s. Reynolds brings it. Strike three. And, of course, we just talked about her, Corey, not being that hummer, but she gets that one for a strike. Strikeout number four. One, two, three, four. Fontella now hits 268. Puts it down to Modus, goes down. Picks it up and makes the throw. And here's the thing where you like Modus. She bends all the way down body-wise. She stays in front of the ball. She scoops it and with the same motion makes the throw to first base. Well, well the thing is, we've seen outstanding third base play here today. Uh, Cerritos was used to it when they had Brooklyn Bedoya here for the last two years. And now they have Natalie Bersurdo and Michaela Modus. I mean, she is outstanding because everything, it looks effortless because she is so fundamentally sound and looks the ball into glove. The Doan, Doan snags it, throws behind Ortiz, and Ortiz catches it to say no problem. Got it. Three up and three down. Quickly through five. Cypress two, Cerrito zero here on Sportsnet USA. Dot net. And Mark, both these teams play well. You're not going to talk about footwork in softball as much as we should, but we've just, in the last two innings, seen tremendous footwork on the infield. We've seen Baserto come through and make a diving catch going to glove side, but that was based on footwork. We saw Modis do that here. We saw Dome, the way she got down, made her feet come up and not just stagnant. They were keep. They were really active and ballistic to come up and cradle that ball in there into her glove and throw over to first. Well, and I'm going to go one step further because when you talk about footwork, you've got to look at outfielders. And you've seen Macias in center field for Cerritos break on the ball quickly and Corey catch it chest high, mm -hmm. not making the acrobatic catch because she's a foot right. too late in getting there and she's got to go down. She's been excellent. And then in right field, well, it's been the nonchalant of Nadia Landeros, who's knowing where the ball is because she's moving as soon as that ball's hit. And like we said, highest apex, you should know where the ball's coming down at. The outfield for this Cerritos team has been just as good as the infield has been today. So Baserto at third, Manolo. Manalo at short, Doan at second base, and Carbajal at first. Velasquez behind the plate. In center field is Fontella. Macias in center, or excuse me, left field is Fontella. Center field is Macias. And right field, as you mentioned, is Landeros. So up by two as we head to the sixth. And one thing that you don't see in this conference that you see in Brad's conference, no three game series against competitors in the same conference. Cody and I talked about that. You're not a big fan either. <clears throat> simply, cause, simply because the so-called big time does it. Doesn't mean it works for you. Exactly, Corey. Ortiz takes a strike. Nancy Kelly Field, nice place to play. I like this field. Yeah. Hit down the line. Base hit all the way to the wall. Ortiz says, you know, being a first base person, I can run. And she stands up safely at second base. Multiple base hits today when you look at what's going on. I mean, you look at Ortiz who can run at first. You look at Doan who can run at second. 
two for three, raising her 373 average, and pinch runner coming in for her is going to be Nania Kyle. In the first matchup, she had three stolen bases in the game, so she's a threat to take third with no outs on that leadoff double. And sh shall we say Ashlyn Ortiz is the most underrated player in the OEC? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't. Th she doesn't get talked about because she doesn't do anything flashy, and she doesn't make any mistakes. So people are, aren't saying, "Oh, she should be better." Dead ball right there at home plate. You couldn't have got the ball to spin any better if you'd have put it on with a string and a top. And it had just sat there and moves the runner to third. So Jacobson gets thrown out two to three on a sack. Moves the runner, sacrifice, moves the runner to third. Okay. So now I wouldn't think because Liz has already struck the ball well, but this is where. Brad, if, if you really care about me, you have Liz drop that squeeze. Nope. Not after that last hit. Liz offers. Corey says, it's all a facade, Mark. <laughs> it's all a facade. Infield on the move, if you're Cerritos. Everybody in motion. It's clockwork. Break from third, wheel to short. Liz drops it. Is it going to drop? It does. And the run will score. I'll let you call that That's since you got hit. two stars. Here. That's going to be a base hit. Okay. She had to go back far enough. And still, it was deep enough. It was got to the outfield. That's a base hit. Eight hit for Cerritos now. Tina Payne comes up. Liz stays over at first time, first base this time. So Liz has got the bat waking up slowly. Yeah, rough start of the season. He just swings through that and says, whoa, where was that ball? I was on Instagram the other night and watching Lisa Fernandez change-ups. That's what that looked like. You know what they compared it to? One, two, three strikes, you're out. Bugs Bunny type of pitch there. I tell you, oh, you're going to swing three <laughs> times before it gets there. Strike three. And then you come back with the fastball. And even if you knew the fastball was coming, you're not going to keep. You're not going to be able to keep up with it, just because of how effective that changeup was. Strike. Three nothing. Here in the sixth. Drop the bunt down. Carranza picks it up, throws over to first for the out. Brad looks over at me and says, I'm sorry, Mr. Pavlovich. It's okay, Brad. Every once in a while, you know, I just don't get the gift I'm searching for. As that bunt goes awry. Brad Pickler, you know. We have one spot that's supposed to be in. It's supposed to be a bunt down third. If it's not there, you let it go. See? Brad just, Brad just lets us know the gift of giving was not there on that play. So, Cody better send me a Christmas card on that one. <laughs> I think so. I think so. A gift should be coming. Nice little fruit basket. And Mark, three, nothing in the bottom of the sixth inning. Last couple of years, you had Rochelle, Rochelle LaDuke, who was at first base for Cerritos. You had Brooklyn Bedoya at third base. You were never out of a game. Oh, they were trying to throw me the ball. I wasn't paying attention. 
And so you were never out of a contest with those two players. Brasher is on the bench right now for Cerritos as an assistant coach. But they have lost that firepower uh, at, the, at the bat. And so this year's... <laughs> And this year's teams, I think they're still looking for those clutch players. Yeah, well, I, Cody Cody basically says with her team that they are constantly learning how to play the game every game. She looked at me and she said, Mark, I don't have a complete team. They're always going to learn something on why am I not doing this well? Why am I... And she says, that's one of the things I understand as a coach here at Cerritos College. First pitch low and taken for a strike. Casanova looks at it. Cody's not happy with the call. Nor should she. That's the first pitch that low that's been called a strike today. Up the middle. Jones got her off the chin. Flip the first. Base hit. Base hit, Mark? Well, I think that's what they're going to call it. I don't think they're going to call it an error. I think they're going to call it a hit. And I will tell you why in a second. Because of the hop. Oh, they Thank gave an error. Because it was an error, Mark. E4. And you know what? I didn't think they were going to. I think it could be changed by the end of the game, depending on what happens here. No, that's an error all the way. Waited on the ball. You wait, you wait, you wait. I think if she came up and tried to scoop up before they took that bounce and then it went off her glove, then you can say, okay, maybe that's going to be a base hit. But pinch running for Cerritos is going to be Frejo. Natalie out of Charter Oak High School. Wants to be a special education teacher, but that's an error because Doan, especially how good she is at second, E4. Okay. So Jocelyn Doan now coming up. No runs, no hits, and one error. Now. So they get a runner on. It foul. Corey Nealon's car. And you also you call that an error because you're trying to preserve something, Mark. Yeah. I'm not going to get accused of anything. <laughs> and see, peer pressure, I don't mind calling it out during the game. Foul the way. But since I'm not the play-by-play -play guy. That's true. That's true. And since I'm the guy that can't run that fast. <laughs> well, then the, well, now that I look at the table, there's none of us that can run that fast. At this table, we don't have to run fast. I just got to be faster than you. As long as I got my inhaler, I'm all right. Yeah, but you got to stop to get Gabby along the way. By then, I'm already in front. She's in a chair. We're good. What you do? Put the poor woman in the car? I'll come back, yeah. Oh, man. I just looked for her. So, Messiah is the team's best player this year, especially at the plate. Takes that one below the knees for a strike. Jasmine, Jasmine out of La Mirada, forensic psychologist. She wants to be outside corner, Mark. And here's the thing. She's patient at the plate. I think she's waiting on one pitch here. And if you're Reynolds, stick with what works. If it's heat, then bring heat. She does. Deep to center field. Off the base of the wall. There's the first hit of the game. And runners at 
second and third. So the no hitter comes to an end on that long fly ball deep to the wall, right where the 1978 state championship sign is. And Mark, that's the pitch she was waiting for. I mean, she saw two fastballs come down, so she knows she's not gonna get a third one in a row. Up the middle. Hold the runners, and a run is in. So three run to score, and that's gonna be the second hit of the inning. And Corey, this is the type of team you see from Cody as a coach. It looks like Cerritos is, oh, they're getting no hit. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be lucky if they get anybody on base. And the next thing you know, boom, 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 the game is tied. Now I like how the scoreboard here at Nancy Kelly Field, the one looks like a seven. So if you're driving by, you say, yeah. <laughs> Cerritos is winning again. Woo! -hoo! So three, one, one out. Are you giving? Are you giving it up? Are you sacrificing here? Because Jasmine Macias has speed at third. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. As a team, they hit two ninety nine coming into this game. Four point seven, so almost five runs a game. Last year, I think they averaged about 6.7, at least two more runs a game. Three home runs. And so. And so. So Ashlyn Ortiz back at first base. At first base previously was Jazzy Lopez. She moves to the outfield. Coming out is Nania Kyle. Home plate umpire Greg Germanski. Field ump is Raul Herrera. Coach Bud Murray's not happy with the length of this uh, timeout. Well, what Brad was going to do was change things up in the circle, is what he was planning on doing. And I don't know if Brad's pitcher convinced him and I think she did because Brad would then, because Ortiz can also pitch for this team. So Lopez in center, McPherson in left, Jacobson in right. Back of the middle, Doe knocks it down, a run will score. Three hits in a row. So Velasquez comes through with one out again, up the middle, sharply hit. Julia Doan did a nice job of backhanding and preventing it from getting in the outfield and maybe Baserto advancing to third. Landeros comes up, three to two here in the sixth. And you saw that cut. Wings over the top of that one. Two fastballs, Landeros choke up a little bit here. Actually, you don't want to choke up on this one. You got to wait for it. Going away. So Cody's team answers here in the bottom of the sixth. Ball gets by Tina Payne behind home and the runners move up on a pass ball. So a pass ball allows the runners to move up. And now the infield comes in. 2-2. Two, two. 
Look the runner back, flip over to first. So nice play by Modis at third inside the bag. Looks as Duarte wheels the third base. Modis gives the courtesy glance and then throws the first for the out. Let's bring up Manolo, Mark. Manalo, excuse me. 22 Auburn eyes leads the team. Runners at second and third. Tying run at third base, go ahead run at second. Two outs, bottom of the sixth. Cypress, Cerritos. Ball in the dirt, Knight's scoop by Payne behind the plate. Infield deep. Fouled away. Took that head out just a little bit too soon. Three to two, bottom of six. Fouled away. I think the Cerritos hitters are feeling like they found the rhythm of Caitlin Reynolds. One, two pitch, fouled away. A little anxious up there. Cerritos in their blue and white pinstripes. Cypress in their blue and white pinstripes. Boy, I can't <laughs> keep getting both these teams wrong. Don't I? I like them so much. He's a little grounder. Dwarty over to first. They call the runner safe. Base hit. And it looked like Miss Doherty relied on her arm just a little bit too much. They were playing deep, and she allowed that third drop, that third bounce to get to her. And Marley beat it out. So we're tied at three on the fourth hit of the inning. Brad came out to discuss <laughs> the runner at first. And from here, she looks safe, too. Brad asked that the infield umpire give, get a second opinion from the home plate umpire. That's like, you know, meatless Monday. Mark votes for a cheeseburger. Corey agrees. That works. Well, I, I'm agreeing with Ed right now. Sometimes it does feel like 20 years, so we might have to go. Depends on where we eat. You get to choose, Mark. 3-3. Shot. Modus backs up to get the third out, but not before we're all knotted up as we head to the top of the seventh. It's Cerritos three, Cypress three. I got that part right here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Look at that, back to back, two things in a row. Neither one was wrong. Corey, Ed, John, and myself, and we didn't expect. Did you expect any different between these two teams playing each other? Not really, especially at this time of the season. I know there have been a lot of games that have been um, – rained out, canceled, and trying to make it up. But about this time of the season, though, you expect Cerritos to be rounding into form. And Cypress, well, I'm not sure they lose interest in a game sometimes. Well, it's duck in a couple of scores for everybody. Top of the third inning, Cuesta is one run behind Canyons now. That score is 7-6. to six. Uh, we have Southwestern and Santa Ana going at each other, and it's Southwestern in the lead by a score of four to nothing. 
course the game we have here saddleback 10 to 3 that's a final beating san diego mesa pasadena city college comes out a winner against citrus 8 to 2 golden west over la harbor 6 to 2 uh, Victor Valley bounces back, takes a second game of that doubleheader over Grossmont, 9-7. Grossmont winning the first game 11-0, and Cuesta beat uh, Canyons in their first game by a score of 9-5. So we head to top seven, knotted at three. Duarte will start things off for Cypress. Of course, John, you do know extra inning games rules here on sportsnetusa.net. If it goes more than two extra innings, the guy who got hired last doesn't get paid for the day. All right, just wanted you to know. Yeah, the guy got, who got hired first makes the most money, pays for everything. So, Duarte, easy fly balls today takes that for a ball uh that would actually be jerry <laughs> <laughs> oh, the invisible man jordy wiggles the bat off the fist deep ranging at second base and you've got to like jocelyn Doan goes back corey nealon Hauls it in. And again, you talked about footwork. She breaks on the ball quickly, gets the right position, and makes it an easy little catch. Yeah, she made the right first step this time. And she started the year as the center fielder huh. for this team. Last year, she played a little bit in left field. And so did Manalo. She played left field as well last season. Very versatile players out there. Doan comes up, rolls her hand over. Easy play at first base, pick it up, walk it in. Out number two for Celeste Carbajal. Two up and two quickly down. We'll see if they're gonna split the series. Again, 9-1 in the first matchup, February 12th between these teams. Reynolds, fly ball to right field, ball carries, caught. And again, I'm going to give so much love to the outfield for Cerritos. They have not misplayed one fly ball. They break on it well. They find where it's coming down, and Landeros pulls it in. Three up, three down. No runs, no hits, no errors. We head to the bottom of the seventh, tied at three. Corey, John, Ed, and the old guy here on Sportsnet, USA.net. So Carbajal, Casanova, and Doan. Be the three up in the bottom of the seventh inning. As Cerritos trying to close it out, Mark, trying to walk it off. Three runs, eight hits, two errors for Cyprus, and those errors, they're what a 960 something fielding percentage as a team. But when I've noticed when you guys have been out here calling games, it's the timeliness of those errors mm -hmm. that have hurt them. Three runs, four hits, and one error for Cerritos. Well, and, and one of the things that causes it too, Corey, and you brought it up, is, is judgment. Mm -hmm. How do I go down and get the ball? It's just like, yeah, I know Doherty, when she makes the play, like you said, I'm going to step back and let the ball play me because I think my arm is strong enough to throw somebody out. When you make those sort of mistakes, that's when you lose games, no matter what the game is. You can't get away from what you were brought up on. Don't let the ball play you, you play the ball. So the outfield in the seventh, Jacobson, Lopez, and McPherson right to left. Ortiz, Doan, Duarte, and Modis on the infield right to left. Behind the plate is Payne and still in the circle. The state's leader in wins is Caitlin Reynolds. Modus inside the bag at third. Everybody else is in their normal positions. Shallow outfield, a little surprised. Uh, 
Wait till they get to the top of the order. But yeah, a little bit. Okay. Carbajal. 0 for 2 today. Off the plate. Reynolds doesn't like that one. I think that one evens out the first pitch. So count is where it should be 2-1. Down the right field line. It's going to drop untouched. Two and two. Good pitch by Caitlin. Looked like a rise screw. It came up and in. Overcast day here at Nancy Kelly Field on the campus of Cerritos College. A little excuse me swing. That's that swing that you say, okay, I got one more pitch coming to me. I ain't going to try to do anything. Please go foul. And if you're the first base person, you don't say to yourself, Bill Buckner, Bill Buckner. Fouled away. Looks like he caught pain up underneath the shoulder, underarm. Modus walks now, make sure she's okay. Kayla, even with the bag at third. Deep in the hole, Doherty up and flips at Corey Nealon. That time she didn't wait on anything. She caught it and threw it as hard as she could. One up, one down. And I can see the smile on your face because we just got done talking about trusting your arm. Yeah. Casanova started everything last inning with an error. And that's the error that Corey Nalen gave Miss Doan at second base. Yeah. So we'll see if someone, any, anyone tries to pull. Modus cuts across. Sweet little throw. One thing you'll see about Modus at third base, Corey, almost all her throws are consistently letter high to first base. And again, it's that footwork, enabling, enabling her to get in the right position to throw. Two up, two down. They're in the bottom of seven. Doan drops a bunt. Flip. Doan says, thank you very much. Reynolds goes down to get it in the second base person because she's speedy's over there to receive it. Three up, three down. Quickly, no runs, no hits, no wears. As we head to top of eight, we're knotted at three. It's Cypress three, Cerritos three here on Sportsnet, USA.net. You love the thought on that play. Maybe any other pitcher on any other team, that's going to be an infield single. But because Caitlin Reynolds, that's her fourth put out of the game, is so adept in the circle that she comes off quickly and throws a strike. And let's give a little love to Doan over at second because the first baseman breaks, Ortiz breaks on the bunt. Doan does this sand there at second base. Mm -hmm. She immediately goes and does what you should do. She covers first to get the out. So we head to eighth innings here on SportsnetUSA.net. John, Ed, Corey, Gabby's wondering where everybody's at. Corey Neal is sitting on one of the spider stools. Oh, this is going to be interesting. That front leg buckles again. Don't grab the tripod behind you. You're going down on your own. You know how I feel about extra innings. I do. 
Corey's excited to be here. I think Rona should start at third base myself. Brad's going to lay down a bunt, a Unless bunt, and a bunt. Unless it's community college baseball. <laughs> John should just pick who the winner is. <laughs> you win today. We're, we're leaving. Bye. We need Roland Heights rules. Modus comes up here in the eighth. Looking for her first hit of the day. Good movement by Carranza. I mean, again, it was right down the plate, seemingly, but it tails in just inside. High and away. One and two is the count. No home runs for Michaela. She does have 21 hits coming into the game. Make that 21. And she singles up the middle. So make that 22 hits on the season for Michaela Modis and Ashlyn Ortiz. Modis at first, three stolen bases. So everybody creeps in at the corners. Second and short, halfway. First pitch, first strike. And it'll be interesting to see what Brad does. Do is he going to lay it down and get that runner in scoring position with one out? I think he starts the runner. Outside for a ball. Ortiz squared. One and one. So movement at third. Movement at first. They both crash. Again, Carranza. Ball low. Offer for the third time in a row. Good pitch by Carranza. Two and one's the count. Again, if there's contact on that pitch, it's popped up. Well, let's see if she comes up high now, thinking that the bump may happen. You heard Brad, perfect pitch, or don't, don't bunt it. Straight back to the circle, has to go to first base, and it was that perfect pitch. Ortiz does what she's supposed to do, sacrifice on the play. Let's bring up Jacobson. So runner moves the second, Jacobson comes up. Had a sacrifice in the sixth. Base hit in the fourth and flew out her first time at bat. Leads the team in average at 406. Sorry, 426 coming into the game. She offers. Well, let's see, I said Brad was gonna bunt three times in a row. I think that's only appropriate that the general gets what he wants. Elizabeth Gomez is on deck. Ball two. And she's had the kind of day that you may just simply sacrifice her over to third base and Gomez, the type of day she's had, be an interesting situation. Jacobson offers again, takes a strike. But with Modus, who's got decent speed at second. And you heard Brad say, no fly balls. Got to keep it on the ground. Make them make a play. Three and one. And this is where you're swinging away. You know if you're the Cypress batter, they're coming to you. Three, one. 
Corey sort of smiles at me like surprised. 3-2, runner at second, one out. So it's up. They tag up. Runner goes. Brad, I thought she was going to go. Ball is dropped. And if Brad's got the runner going, the she, runner scores. She would have been thrown out at night. Ah, yeah, she would have scored. Would've nah. We'll never know. So Brad gets the runner to third with two outs. Liz, who's been on fire. Takes it low. Cody, Cody comes out to the circle. A little, little chess move here. She, and she's not happy. She's not happy with home plate right now. I think this is just to reiterate to her team. There's two outs. Play it well. Get to first. You don't have to worry about that runner. You don't have to look over at her if it's a ground ball in the infield. So do you sort of pitch around Gomez and then let Payne come up the bat? Nope. Okay. I remember when Scott Pickler decided not to pitch around a hitter that we saw during a Fuller to College. Well, I left, but uh, Fuller to College, Cypress College game, and that young man hit his third home run of the day. Mark, unless it's Barry Bonds or Lisa Fernandez, I'm pitching everybody. This is why I'd be a horrible coach. I'm pitching everybody. If Lisa Fernandez is up there, then I'll pitch around. Everybody else? Jocelyn Ayla was up. Okay, maybe I'll pitch around. Oh, we're going to say. I'll pitch around. But, it, <laughs> but there aren't too many feet. Wow. Corey would be pitching around most of the people from Orange County. The knees for a strike. Go after everybody. Unless they went to El Toro High School. Make them beat you. Go after everybody. Liz, one and one, two outs. Tied game, three to three. Go ahead, run at third base. High and away, two and one, and hitters that, count. And that pitch hasn't connected in this game yet for Carranza. But you like her in the circle. This is our first time seeing her, or at least my first time seeing her in the circle. Two, one. Late on the swing. And from what you've seen in this game, you like what you see. She's a pitcher out there who has confidence Three, three, top of eight. Two, two count. Strike three called. And so Cypress, who looked like they had something going when they got that base hit, move people on, get nothing with it. As we head to bottom of eight, it's Cypress three, Cerritos three, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Ed Fort, Corey Nealon, the old guy and John sitting in the middle of the table as we'll see if Cerritos can pull it off here in the bottom of the eighth. They're top of the order. So they've got Macias, Berserto, and Velasquez due up. And again, we were just talking about Carranza and how confident she looks in the circle and that pitch I mean, as soon, as soon as she threw it, she was walking off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if she wouldn't have gotten that call, Cody would have come out the dugout again. Well, I think Cody and Bud might have had to watch from the, you know, not from the dugout. So we're probably the only team still playing here today on SportsNetUSA.net. Everybody else is probably already heading home. Let's 
Macias start off the bottom of the eighth. Tied at up the middle. Backhanded by Doan. What a play at second. She goes down, sucks it up like an octopus, and throws the runner out at first. And Mark, that was a leadoff single. That was going to start the end of the game. If that gets through Cerritos wins, no doubt she scores a winning run. One pitch, one out. Spin the hitter, call the strike. Barsuto up. Rounded out to short. Then at a 1-5-3 out. Got a base hit, and now is 0-2. Down in the dirt, one and two is the count. Line away. Tune two to count. Mark Cuesta in Canyons, bottom of the third. 12 9. So we, they got some while. Ball three. Oh, they, we still may be playing. Who's got 12 and who's got nine? Cat Cuesta's got 12, Canyons nine. Three two pitch. Up the middle, down and for a base hit. So seeing eye from Baserto. And you go back to the ball hit before her. And right now you'd be looking at runners at the corner. So we'll see what Cody does here now, Corey with a runner at first and one out. I think it's just the opposite here. I'm not laying down, I'm not sacrificing any out. I'm swinging away. Go get it, Miss Velasquez. Single her last time at bat. Up the middle, stopped by Doan, gets the runner at second. Safe there. Doan goes down, rolls the ball to second place. Duarte's there, picks it up, throws the first. They can't get a double play. So fielder's choice for Velasquez, but that's what they wanted. Three sharply hit balls all up the middle. Two outstanding plays by Doan. There's two outs. As of right now, two game-saving plays yes. by Doan. Yeah. And Corey, the, I'm going to go back to you talk about them all being fundamentally sound. I mean, mentally, that's a fundamentally sound play. Yeah, she didn't panic once she stopped the ball. She didn't try to get up and throw it to first base wildly. She recognized she can roll it over close enough to the bag that her shortstop is going to be there. Two one count, two out, bottom, off the plate. Three one count. Landeros is due. Landeros waits, the rock, ball four. So Marley Manalo, all she needs to do, Corey, is a single. Maybe the winning run could score. Cody's going to have a conversation with everybody. I, you think Cody's the type of coach, and you know Cody's the type of coach that she knows the situation, she knows her surroundings. A single into the outfield, sending the runner. 
Velasquez has got to turn third and, and be on it once she does. I mean, we talk about coaches and wins and how many wins Brad has, how many coaches, how many wins Cody has. Up at San Jose City College, Debbie Hunt Rooney, 900th win. Yep. On March 14th. Nine, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of wins, yeah. And San Jose, they were a team a couple years ago, I think the year before COVID, when really thought they had a chance to take state. Well, when you look at this game, this is why with softball, what makes softball so fun is there are so many teams that are competitive. Records, yeah, I know records mean something. What's your standings? But talent-wise, it's very, very tight when you look at all these softball teams. Foul ball. Corey Nalen said, that's it. When that thing was hit, Corey was ready to say, that's it. Let's go home. John was going, go that way. Go that way. Stay foul. Oh, no, it wasn't fair. Okay, all right, okay. That was a walk-off there. And it's interesting. We'll see what happens if she's going to be over-aggressive here and how Caitlin Reynolds comes back. Okay. Modus rolls her eyes because that gave that sweet little, hey, get me out, number three, hop to the third base person for Cypress College. Oh, and two, it's a play pitch. Let's see what Reynolds does on the 0-2 pitch. Takes her time. Down in the dirt for a ball. Went fishing, came up with nothing. One, two pitch. Just off the plate. Boy, there was almost a flinch from the home plate umpire. Two and two's the count. Got to make it money. Up the middle. Here comes the throw. They hold the runner on a quick play by Lopez in center. And it was that bang, bang play, Corey Nalen. I don't know. I might have let my runner keep going. I, I think it would have been out at the plate if they would have uh, tried to score there. So. Yeah, I'd, not, I'd, not, enough, not enough speed on the bases to do that one that time. I might have to agree with you on that, Ed, but still, I'm sending. Bases throw. are juiced. Foul ball. And the throw was offline just a little bit, and it was cut off. Yeah, and that's the thing. It was cut off. So that's why I think they would have had a chance because Payne was on first base side, and it was cut off. Oh, two. Fouled Ooh. away. Good pitch. I mean, outstanding pitch. 3-3, three, three. bottom of eight, two strikes, bases loaded. Cerritos, just a breath away from taking the game. Fouled away again. See, John, just like that down the first baseline, except I caught it. I shouldn't have, but I did. And that's why he's smiling over there down the first baseline, and Mark was not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still not today. 0-2. Everybody in blue and white flinched. Everybody looked at each other and said, oh, my. Cody said, great call. Look at that. Ed Ford said that was strike three. I was ready to say next up for Cypress. 2-2. Two, two. 
two out. Base is loaded. Reynolds trying to shut the door on Cerritos. Just enough to get out of the infield. Outfield in. Anything that gets out of the infield, this game is over. Caitlin takes her time, brings the heat. Fouled away. Just got a piece of it. Yeah. Throw some more peanut butter on there and you'd probably have strike three. Caitlin's doing a nice job of mixing it up. She's not even trying to challenge or throw away. There's two pitches she's throwing. I'm going up high and it's fast. I'm going up high and it's not as fast. Doan walks in to talk to her pitcher. Fontella lines it up. 2-2. Two, two. Try three called. We head to inning number nine. Ed, John, Corey, the old guy here for an exciting matchup between two fantastic programs here on Sportsnet, USA.net. 3-3, Mr. Nalen, Mr. Ford. Wake up, John. Wake up, wake up, John. And you can blame me. I told Gabriella game's almost over. <laughs> <laughs> so Karanza back in the circle. Three runs, nine hits, two errors for Cypress. Three runs, six hits. One error for Cerritos. <clears throat> So top nine. Of course, if this was, what you guys say, baseball would be top four? Oh, if this was baseball, we'd just be getting out of the first inning. And they'd be throwing their 16th pitcher. <laughs> but that's okay, because they got 32 pitchers on the team. And none ever pitched in high school. But, hey, that's okay. You know, it's one of those, who wants to pitch? I do. I do. Well, Haskell is behind the plate as Karan's in the circle. Let me, give, let me give Brad Pickler the squeeze sign. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michaela Galvez, freshman from Anaheim, starts off the inning hitting for Tina Payne. Yeah. Top of nine. Tied at three. Ball down and away. And home plate ump, I think he's done a nice job of evening out the calls. Yeah, it hasn't been one where there's complaints from just one team. Where yeah. You know. And even when it, there has been, I think those so-called makeup calls or makeup strikes have been there for both squads. Yeah, I agree with you, Corey. I mean, the, you know, the misses and the misses are fair. Yeah. You know. Line away. Two and one, two and one. Wind blowing slightly out. Trees rocking back and forth. Overcast guy, sun at our back. Three and one. Brad's still in his hitter as the outfielders back up now, Corey, on this 3-1 pitch. Don't want anything by you. Right down the middle, three and two. Brad says, don't be swinging at that high pitch. Make sure it comes to you. 3-2 pitch, top of the nine, tied at three. Branza brings it. 
short. Nice little pickup throw over to first. Once again, Manalo looks at, and Corey, we've talked about footwork and everything else for that Cypress team, but then again, you've got to look at the way the gloves have been for the Cerritos team. Yeah, Doan and Manalo has been outstanding in the middle. And Baserto at third, she's had a few plays that went for outs instead of singles. So now McPherson doubled, flew out, grounded out. Down the right field line, that's out of play. 0-2. Oh so what they're doing in this extra innings is you're just evening out from the first game. There it is, up the middle. Go down, try to knock it down, that's what you do, base hit. Make sure that that's all you're gonna give up, and boy, Ed Ford would say Mark Pavlovich likes this game. Why? Because everybody getting dirty. Woo! Yeah. And, and Duarte, top of the order. Talk about a player that's due. 0 for 4 today. Yeah, I agree with you. Hitting 400, leads the team in slugging percentage and hits with 30. Walks and doubles. And everything she's hit has been a routine out. Squares, backs off, and what you, out. And what you like about Cypress teams is they will sacrifice anybody and everybody at any time. Yeah. But for Jaylene, who's due. Once again, infields moving. Everybody's dancing. It's a sock hop out here at Nancy Kelly Field. Get away. Takes it down the middle. Corey Nalen would have been swinging out of his socks on that pitch. Would have been like EPMD. Three one. Routine fly ball and Corey, that's what it's been all day long as Landeros doesn't even have to move to make that catch. And she hasn't been in her rhythm. She hasn't been at the plate really comfortable because she is late on that one more time. So it's up to Doan. Second base person for Cyprus. Drops one down here, it's gonna drop in fair. Runners at first and second on a, ooh, excuse me. I hit that one, give it a base hit. Every once in a while, you have to be lucky. And we'll see what Caitlin can do here. Again, and here's where it, it might be unfair to compare and things like that. The well, Emily? Yeah, and we've heard comparisons. And each of their own, each individual player has, you know, has been great in their own ways. But if you got to compare, here's where one comes over the fence or a run comes across the plate. Own one. Reynolds fouls it off, rolls her head. And she was thinking the exact same thing. She said, I'm going to shut up those two old men down the way. Exactly. I got something for you. You're going to keep talking about me. John's decided he's, he's going to end this game now. Let me just unplug everything. 
High and away. Good pitch by Carranza. Even though it was high and away, it changes that eye level. It changes that comfort zone that Caitlin was getting into. Off the play. Ed Ford running to the car, changing his dinner reservation. <laughs> Said, you know. <laughs> it's running out there to take down equipment. Off the plate, snap. Well, Doan would have been thrown out at first. I, I would have not walked towards Brad if I was her. <laughs> Full count. Runners on the go. 3 2. Bronza brings it. Fouled away to the fence. Caught right back there. And we head to bottom of nine. Cypress 3. Cerritos 3. Sportsnet USA.net. Ed Ford. Out there, Corey standing next to me, John running the ship, and the old guy hanging on tight to see what happens here in the bottom of the ninth on Sportsnet, USA.net. Oh, no, I was just going to go check, but, you know, we still good. Bottom <laughs> line, we, we all right. Corey says, oh, I don't want to wake her up. You know what I, John, you know what I blame this on? The new hats. <laughs> Take them off. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> That's it. Oh, that's Corey's fault. Because it doesn't fit yet. Dude, dude, you put out that, there's three holes there. Wait, your head's not that fat. I have hair. Oh, man. So does John. Like so I does said, Ed. Like I said, I have hair. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. My hair is voluptuous. <laughs> One, 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 one part. <laughs> Liz, Liz is going to shave your head so you put that hat back on. I'm going to go get your old hat, too. Okay. So Liz has been listening to the way I've been calling it. It ain't anything close to being old hat. It's just old. So Carbohol, Casanova, and Dome. They started out the sixth when they got three runs to tie it up. Little pop on the ball, outside for a ball. And again, as many balls that have been up in the air for a strike, one seemingly one. hit hard, Mark, they haven't carried today no, as no, normal. No, they haven't. And Corey, there have been so many routine fly balls. One and one. Down low. Two and one. Three runs, 11 hits, two huge errors by Cypress. Inside out swing takes it foul. Three runs on another outstanding comeback from Cerritos College in the bottom of the sixth. And that's why we're all knotted at three here in the ninth inning. Go down to get the ball. Nice stop, foul ball. Ashlyn comes up a little bit. Hobbled. And again, Carbohol did a nice job of waiting on it. Two and two. Late on that one. Just gets a piece to stay alive. Two and two still the count. Well, I'm dirty at first. I'm dirty at second. I'm dirty at short. Still sort of clean here at third uniform-wise.
Down low. Three and two's the count. The Boffman said if you're not dirty, you haven't been playing the game right. We are so different. Fouled away. I am, say, because I'm fundamentally sound. You're fundamentally sound. Oh, this is clean up here on the up top. Maybe get your right knee down a little bit if you're right-handed, left knee down, there you go. You're still dirty. But other than that, you don't even need to. Into the alley. That's going to go to the wall. Backhanded. Nice play, Corey, as you thought that was going to roll all the way to the wall. Jacobson snags it with a backhand, turns and throws, holds what looks like it's going to be a double to a long single. Yeah, she turns in that double to a single, and again, Jacobson, good right fielder, and now it's going to be interesting. Bottom nine, tie score. You're not the fastest on first. You got to move her over. Casanova squares. Takes her for a ball. Here's the thing. Caitlin Reynolds is so good defensively. She's going to look at second first before she throws her first. Fouled away. And here's where Casanova has to get the ball down. It's imperative, even with two strikes, you got to get the ball down. One and one to count now. Lotus on top of the plate at third, backs up a half a step. Off the plate. And Doan sliding in behind first. I thought we might see a snap throw. Drops it down. No look at second base. I'm I'm like you too. I thought there would be a look at second base. No look at second base. Took the sure out at first. One out. Runner at second. And Mark? Are you gonna try to waste it out here? No. No, no. Oh, Jocelyn Doan is gonna swing away. She, oh, I what like a bunt, it. pretty I bunt. Like Got the runner at first, but that was such a sweet bunt. She drops it a half a foot outside a home plate and Corey she flew down the line if it's not for a perfect play you got runners at the corner and Jasmine Messia steps up to the plate the center fielder is outstanding on defense today Mamarada high school sophomore and as you recall last time she was up she was robbed of a base hit by Julia Doan at second base yeah so your team's best hitter your best player coming up to chance to walk it off. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Can't do it. No, yeah, I could. I, no, you could, but after that defensive play you saw just now. I don't care. I don't think you do it. I do. I do. Plus, you don't have the runner at third base. It's going to be, be there. On one of those, it's one of those plays where you 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 send the runner, and you know the runner's going to be down six feet down if the line. If it was by anybody the... else but Cyprus, yes, but because Cyprus does it on their side often, I don't think you do it. John, <clears throat> your butt squeeze with two outs. I do. I do. And I understand what you're talking about against a good defensive team, and that's why I do it against a good defensive team because a good defensive team is going to try and be perfect. This is where you take advantage of somebody trying to be perfect. I do not bun it 
down third base, though. I bunt it and push it towards second. Now, if Reynolds comes out quick enough, then shame on me. Yeah, that's shame on you because ah, what has she yeah. done all season long to say she ain't going to come up with that? I don't care what you've done. It's what you need to do. And they're going to put runners at the corner. Yeah. Brad had a long conversation in the circle. Bottom of nine, two outs, winning run at third. Intentional walk is going to Macias. They'll be at the corners. Macias was just finding her groove because she had a double in the three run six. She was robbed in the eighth and they don't want to give her that chance to bring up Natalie Berserto. And this is the one I wouldn't pitch to. I wouldn't pitch to Berserto. She's a hard nose down in the dirt. I'm going to beat you softball player at the plate. I think the choice either way was is difficult. a tough one. Yeah. But Becerto, who's also from Walnut High School, wants to be a CSI. There it is. Drop right field and Corey. I thought it was going to drop. And you just once again got to look at the outfield out there. Jacobson comes running over. This has been a heck of a softball game. Played fundamentally sound by both these teams. They've made the big plays when they've had to make the big plays. And there, that's the voice of Brad Pickler standing right next to me. And Brad, that is true. That's really true for your team. It looked like it was going to be true for Cody's team. Both your teams always seem to play these type of games against quality opponents. I don't know what it is with Cypress and Cerritos that your games just seem to get upgraded when you take on somebody like Cody or she takes on somebody like you. Right. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's the time of year. We're 25 games in. Teams are getting a little better. Her team's better. I think, you know, if we don't make errors in that one inning, I think we're KK was throwing a no-hitter. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't mentioning anything. Oh, it's a good rivalry. They're good teams. You know, they are. That's all good. And it's a fun game to watch. Yeah, it is. She was, uh, was questioning me a lot walking the leadoff hitter. I go, She's hitting 500. She hit two home runs against India Caldwell last year. Why would we pitch to her? Exactly. You know? Exactly. And there's the difference between a pickler not pitching to a home run hitter and a pickler who pitched to a home run hitter. John sort of smiles at me. John was out here when we did Cypress baseball. And they did that. Brad Pickler comes over here and says, I'm not pitching anybody who's hit a couple home runs. And now we'll see what happens. As Modus will start things off. Here in the top of the 10th on Sportsnet, USA.net. Modus takes a strike. Down and away. One and one. Three runs, 11 hits, two huge errors for Cyprus. Three runs, seven hits, and one big error for Cerritos here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Modus holds up on that one. Two and one's the count. Both starters have gone the entire game here today. The young ladies are pitching well. Off the fist, drops foul. Two and 
2-2 count. Off the plate, three and two. Brad Pickler said if it wasn't for a couple errors, this game would be over. Talked about how good both these teams are when you were gone. Shot in left field. Brad gets that leadoff hit he was so desperately looking for by Modis. Well, she's played good at third all day today. She has flashed the glove. She is a solid thrower from her defensive position, and now she's the go-ahead run at first base. Brad flashing signs. Ashlyn Ortiz comes up. Ashlyn takes that for a ball. Basuto down from third. Carbajal playing deep over at first. Jocelyn Doan at second. Marley Manalo at short. Solid infield for Cerritos. Strike right there. And also Two and one's love, the count. And what you love about softball, Mark, is you're not worried about pitch count. You're not worried about a middle reliever, late reliever, third inning reliever. Strike two taken. You just go out there and throw strikes in the 10th inning. <laughs> Hit down to center field, drops. Throw to second, they're gonna get the runner on a tough play in center field, Corey because what you had to do is when Macias comes in, looked like she was gonna get there, you had to go halfway, the ball drops, they get the runner at second base. Yeah, she was in no person's land there. Middle of the first, middle of the second. She didn't have a good enough angle as we did here. Didn't know it was gonna drop. Yeah. Jacobson comes up. And what an outstanding play by Macias. I think she saw the same thing that I can't get to this. So I know she's sitting there at, at in between first and second. I got a chance. Yeah, I've got her. Just I want to field it. And, and what you yeah. liked about her too, of course, she didn't rush the play. Yeah, like yeah. a lot of people will panic and say, I got to get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she made sure she got the ball first and then throws the second base. 2-0 count for a strike. Jacobson made the all-tournament team last year. Mark is thinking that when we were about to leave, it was an hour ago. So it has turned into a community college baseball game. It has. On the line. Base hit. Foul ball. Was it foul? Ed, Ed Ford confirms it. Just by, oh, okay. Okay. On play, Greg Jermanski was on top of it. As soon as it bounced, he called foul. So Jacobson, that X-Factor type of player. So for a second, it looked like Cypress. Easy, lazy, fly ball. Shortstop ranges out to the outfield. And Corey, it's one of those where you're going out there and you Fontella, and Morgan Fontella says, I got it, I got it, and the shortstop keeps on coming. And you go, please, you better catch it. Because if you miss it, I had it for sure. 
And Mark, speaking of misses, Jacobson got under it just a bit. Brings up Liz Gomez. Takes that for a ball. Liz wants Corey Naylor to put his hat on so she can end the game. She's been solid two for four today. If all four of us were wearing our hats, you'd have my age on the back of everybody's head. 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Fly ball easily caught. And once again, you just look at the way the outfield plays there. As Macias says, I, I got that all the way. Two smart plays by her, Corey Nealon, as we go to bottom of number 10. We'll be here tomorrow on sportsnetusa.net. Oh, wait a minute. There's no lights at this softball field. There's a theme we can find for all th softball fields. No lights. Well, we can turn the cars around and do it that way. But as for right now, as we head to the bottom of the 10th, it's Cypress 3, Cerritos 3, here on sportsnetusa.net. You know what I like about, oh, there you go. John's got his light. You know what I like about this hat, though, John, my old one? See how dirty that is? See, Corey, that's, that's. That's nasty. That's what That just is. shows you. Yes. Hard work pays off. <laughs> yeah. You know what that hat reminds me of? First time I braided my hair and let it lock up, couldn't wash my hair for two months. That's what that hat looks like. <laughs> Don't get too close as we're here in the bottom of the 10th inning. Three runs, 12 hits for Cypress, two errors. Brad Pickler says one or two of those errors, if we don't have them, we go home. Three runs, seven hits, one error for Cerritos. All three runs came in the sixth inning for them. And again, two outstanding players in the circle for these yeah. teams. Yeah, they both pitched well. Both of them deserve to win. Well, Duarte at short, Modis at third base. Julia Doan at second, Ashlyn Ortiz at first. In the outfield, Jacobson, Lopez, and McPherson right to left. Tina Payne still behind the plate. And Caitlin Reynolds in the circle for the bottom half of the 10th inning. So Velasquez will start the inning. What, is that tomorrow? Are we packing up and coming back? Is that what we're doing right now? <laughs> Are we going to have, what is it, California tiebreaker rules or international tiebreaker rules? I have no idea what they're doing right now. Start the runner. In. Oh, okay. That's what it is. So umpire taking a break. So Official umpire timeout. There we go. Wow. So between these two squads, state championship appearance, it wouldn't be a state championship tournament without one of these two teams. That's true. That's true. Well, like we said, when you look at the rankings right now, it's San Mateo, number one, Palomar, two, Cypress, three, Fullerton College, four, which I don't understand. Fullerton College is undefeated, and they're leading the OEC. Uh, okay, yeah, and that's why the rankings – are um, <clears throat> askewed? Yeah, because they're the number one team Wrong. in the state. But in the in the RPI, Fullerton is number one. With Cypress number two. With Cypress number two. Then Mount Sac, Palomar, Long Beach. Now that's for Southern California. If you look in north Northern California, it's San Joaquin Delta, San Mateo, Fresno. So that's a little different because San Mateo is number one in the rankings. Well, what's really strange about somewhat in the RPI in the north 
you have Sacramento City College, which is on fire, mm -hmm. and they're not very, you know, they're not close to the top in, in RPI. Uh, Same so sort of thing with the uh, situation where, you know, you have uh, Santiago Canyon, and we've been doing games with them for a long time, so we have no access to grind against them, and not like we don't like them, but 14, oh, come on, <laughs> come on. And we have a, a sub uh, sub 500 record by quite yeah. a bit. Yeah, it's just and CRC up north. They've got a team this year. Actually, watched them play a couple times. Well, got through a few innings of each couple few of their games, but they they've got a team this year. I mean, well, they had a team last year too, and they they uh, they got into the uh, I, they weren't in the state tournament, or were they? Oh, they weren't in the state tournament, no, they but they, they, they're they going to get there this year. I think they right. get there this year. Because I think Sierra, because oh. they lost their pitcher, I think they might be the team that takes a step back. Or they have taken a step back. Yes, so I they've think, taken a step back. So CRC is one of those teams, along with San Jose, that's going to step up. Well, San Jose was in it last year. Yeah. So, uh the team that always seemed to do well in the regionals was Monterey Peninsula, but uh, they never could, you know, they couldn't make that final step and get into the state uh, tournament. And now with uh, Keith Berg gone to San Jose State, uh, they're they're in a rebuilding process right now. So our official timeout ends as we head to the bottom of the 10th, tied at three. And the sun's out. The sun is out and it feels good. We could play another 10. <laughs> uh, you know what, I've seen some dirty looks. But <laughs> we could, but I, I'm gonna be in my car. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I remember Sportsnet back in the day, people were cut off for saying stuff like that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and the, the axe man is, uh, <laughs> yeah, but here's the difference. The left side of the table. I can read, so here's the problem. <laughs> Last guess. Fouls it off. One and two is the count. One, two. Up the middle. Reynolds, who plays her position well, fields that one. So one up, one down here in the bottom of 10. So Landeros, who walked her last time at bat, 0 for 3. Takes that first strike. 15 hits, 3 doubles. No errors last season. Strike 2. And Corey, this is the thing you brought up with both these young women just in the circle. It seems like they can just go on forever when they're pitching a game. Reynolds bounces that one into the home plate. One and two. And especially, Mark, since they are the pitchers for their squads. I mean, there really haven't been, you know, except for a few innings here and there, any other pitchers for either club I mean for Reynolds this is her 23rd start she's 17 and 4 only one other person has a start and that's Montez this season for Cyprus 131 innings pitched 1.12 earned run average Orte deep in the hole Ortiz can't dig it so that's going to be an E6. So 
So you're going to call it an E6 because you seen Duarte make those plays before you seen her arms. But she kind of lazily threw that ball over and thought she had enough time. Yeah. Shot off the glove of Modus, then a throw to second. So that's going to be a five to six to four put out. So I was paying attention at that time. Did you notice? <laughs> or if you want to, just call it a 15. Five to six to four. I know it's math, and I know that you guys at Cal State Fullerton, but uh, runner goes. Throw, the runner is thrown out. So Cody sends the runner, hopefully, to catch him by surprise. And Cypress easily gets out of it. One big air. But that's erased on a throw out over to second base. No runs. One hit, one air, nobody left on base. As we head to 11, that's like 11 o'clock at night, it's Cypress 3. Serrato's 3, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. And Carranza, again, both these pitchers came into this game 131 innings pitch. Cypress is 14 and 7 this season. Carranza, her record is 14 and 7 this season. You know, I'm sure Brad's saying, you know, you guys weren't there Saturday. We had to call the game because of rain, so we're just making up for it right now. <laughs> Final from Santa Ana Southwestern. The Jaguars beat the Dons by a score of 4 to nothing. A shutout for Southwestern as they continue to improve the record only other one other game going on canyons and cuesta and that's slug fest canyons uh now takes the lead by a score of 13 to 12 and uh cuesta has to uh not let what happened to them last year uh, but in that uh in their conference it's, it's pretty much a, a four-team race and We'll see who gets the uh, the top two spots out of that. Right now, Moore Park is uh, pretty much dominating people. Tina Payne, start things off. <laughs> so when a player makes a big play on defense, do they, they usually come up on offense and do something big? They usually do. Well, let's see if Tina Payne can do that. Freshman from Kennedy High School. So we are in the 11th, right? Yes, we are. Because the scoreboard's confusing me. It should be 0 0 under the one. Tina Payne hits it, it drops for a base hit. I'm not sure why they've got it that way. That's why I wanted to ask you, because I'm going, that makes no sense. One is uh, one is 11. Yeah, but why do you have three runs up underneath the one? If we're in the 11th. That's true. Should be 0-0. Zero, zero. We've got the right. totals are at the end. You know, once the guy pins a couple stars on. I know. Hey. He knows, hey. thinks he knows everything. Only the sixth hit for Tina Payne. <laughs> I'm proud of my stars. <laughs> <laughs> Got me thinking now we're in a 12. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I thought, Wait a minute. No, I'm I, already confused. I can see what they're doing now. I don't think they want to confuse people to put three in the 10th. Although, that would make sense, too. Drop down the butt. Throw to first. The runner advances. No, I'll, I'll go with Mark. It, it, should be, it should be zero and zero. Yeah. It, 
Or blank. <laughs> yeah. Blank. Or, or, or blank. Or blank, yeah. yeah. Blank, yeah. It should be blank. Because when I said that and then I looked up there, I thought. nobody scored in this inning. Yeah, yeah. So let's see if Jaylene with one out. And Corey, you really look at her. She has struggled today. You keep waiting for that big hit mm -hmm. from her. Well, and you, you've said she's been just a little off on every at bat. And our friend John Van Gasten is not here. Today. That's true. So yeah, John he, couldn't make it today. He's covering something else. But we should be stopping by here to do another game down the road as uh, Cerritos will be uh, entertaining the Mount Sac Mounties. I believe that game is on April 9th. Going down the middle for a strike. Two and one's the count. You know those quarterbacks who aim their throws? Or those shooters who short arm their shots? That's what she's been like at the plate today. She's been at the plate, not wanting to swing hard in the field, not really wanting to throw hard or overthrow. Three and one. Go ahead run at second in pain. Got a base hit. Three and two. And the indecision, Corey, you watched her on that one. She walks away, this look on her face like, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Three, two, Forte looks. And once again, if the ball stays, just drops foul. Corey, I'm gonna go back to what you said. Is it the indecision that she's just trying to get a hit and not just swinging? I, it's more like, I can't remember my my swing, my stroke, my rhythm. I can't remember that. I can't get back to that. It's like when you're trying to take a deep breath, and for people with asthma like me, that you can't get that deep breath. That's what it's like at bat. Okay. 2-2. Two, two. Drop. Hit. Air. Runner will come in. As you see the people looking, then the throw to second. Dorte goes. She's safe on an ill-advised throw by Doan after she makes the error that allows Payne to score on the play. So E4 on that. Was wondering how you were gonna score that because it was an error. Even though the ball ate up the second base person, it was an error by Doan. Yeah. And again, and that's one of those hits that maybe that breaks the cycle. You can actually get that deep breath in and out for Duarte, and, and maybe that gets her on a hot streak. Doan now comes up. Cypress now up four, two, three here in the 11th. And what was interesting about that hit is that's the first time she had hit something on the ground today. Yeah, yeah. So meeting in the circle, as what are they gonna do? It's four to three here. Now I'm just thinking we missed an inning. Yeah, well, and here's the thing too, when you look at Dylan and what she did at Cerritos is, she looks at the runner mm -hmm. that's at second base and tries to get to the ball too quickly instead of saying, okay, if she goes, I'll take the out at first. All we need to do is hold the runner at third base. Outfield in tight as Doan squares. Corey, I've never seen a left fielder walk in this close on a butt. I, I tell you what. Have you? The other day. Uh, that game I was watching the other uh, the other day I texted you about. I'd swing away. 
I would have swung away. I would just, I'd turn around if I was Brad and looked and just said, just slap it. Now they'll go back into their normal positions. Let's see if they stay there. And the problem was, batter slapped it right to the left fielder. <laughs> two and two count. One out. See if Doan squares. She drives it deep in left field. That's home run! As Doan pulls it all the way out. Her first, over the right field wall. See their first home run of the season for Julia, and that's the first ball today that got caught up in that jet stream, we like to say. <laughs> and a two-run home run for Julia. Yeah. Six to three. And Mark, he got caught up high enough. And again, the hardest hit by any squad, any person today. We've seen a lot of fly balls. Yeah. And they usually carry. But now the wind has shifted out of the park. Earlier it was shifting in. Foul ball. As Reynolds puts a little smoke on that one. And it's a tough break because it looks like that those home runs at Cypress College for baseball. Yep. It just carried and carried and carried. It had a shot. Another one to right field. Easily taken there by Landeros. And Corey, that was hit hard enough too that Landora, Landeros could not respond to it to get back on it. Of course, it hits the top of the fence, doesn't come back. It takes the right skip mm. for Cyprus as they get three big runs here in the top of the 11th. And that was a good pitch by Carranza too because you're not expecting Dome to turn on it. You're mm -hmm. not expecting that, her to hit for power. Kind of expecting her to come down and square away for another bunt. Yeah, exactly. Even with two strikes. Modus up there. Three big runs for Cyprus here in the 11th. Down and away. Bat Brad telling me they were going to lay down a bunt with Doan for me. Doesn't work out, so what do they do? They hit a home run. It works out for the crowd. Strike down the middle. 14 hits for them. Down her way. Six runs, 14 hits, three years. Not a good defensive day for Cypress. Fly ball to right field. That should do it. So that's going to bring us to the bottom of the 11th as three runs on two hits. A huge error for Cerritos. Allow Cyprus to take a lead six to three here on Sportsnet USA dot net. Ed, John, Corey, and the general here on Sportsnet USA dot net. Mo Private Nailin, what do you think about that game? <laughs> Please. Well, hey. <laughs> So Fontella will lead off Carbajal and Casanova do up for Cerritos. Okay, I'm I'm gonna throw something at you because we've always we've always heard it. Well, there's there's nothing 
modesty. You, you can always learn something from from a loss, and there are, there are some good losses. I mean, would you look at this game and say it would be a good loss if Cerritos can't come back? I, I think this is one of those confidence-building games, even in a loss. Okay, I, so. I think these non-conference games at this time, these makeups, are beneficial for teams because you're not stuck in, oh, we've seen this team, we've got to play them three times in a row. This is more of a playoff atmosphere type of game okay. that gets you ready for those playoffs, that you got to win one. You don't win it now, but if you make the playoffs, you'll win it then. So, yeah, I think this is a positive experience no matter what happens if you're Cypress. Or not Cypress, but Cerritos. I really do think that this is the type of the game and the type of outing that Carranza's had in the circle, pitching strong for those 11 innings. Nothing but good things happen from this point forward. See if Reynolds can finish it off here in the bottom of the 11th. <laughs> I thought we were the only ones who was ready to go. Oh, man. <laughs> base hit down the third baseline. Modus goes down and hops over her glove and a single down. <laughs> Oh, Corey Neal is still trying to figure out how you call a strike when it hits the dirt and bounces <laughs> into a catcher's glove. But, uh, you know, it you can ask Cody at the end of the game. Precipitous <laughs> drop at the knees. <laughs> it was an ankle biter. Mark, if, it had, if that was at the ankles, I would have been surprised. So, Cerritos answers with a base hit. And this Cerritos team doesn't have the speed as what they've had the last few years since we've been out here regularly. Yeah. That's the one thing they don't have this year. Way. So, Alyssa Cap sits in. Or that's okay, that's the player. And Sotella was at second. They don't have yep. that speed. They don't have the Spoolstras that I heard you talking about uh, last game. Yeah. Up the middle, base hit, back-to-back -back hit. So the answer you want to see if you're a Falcon fan is exactly what Cody's team is showing you. Casanova reached on an error, scored a run. You need runners, you need runs. There's no outs. You she, bring him over? Uh, yeah, I think you do. I think you offer. I think you drop one down. If you're the runners, you've got to make sure you're running hard to the base you're heading for. She takes out one high. Tuno. Modus not charging. Ortiz not charging. I think Tuno. Hit, hitting is contagious, Mark. And you might want to swing away. Well, remember, Doan tried to bunt twice and hit a home run. Two one count. Dribble up the middle. The second for one. The first. Not in time. Runners at the corners. One out. Trailing by three. So Jocelyn Dome. 
for Sereno steps up, avid snowboarder. Jocelyn wants to make up for her miscue at the top of the 11th. And look how shallow they're playing her in right field and fairly shallow in center too. Lynch is on a strike. She's got to wait, she's not wait, but she's got to go after that outside pitch if she gets one. She's got to see it well because they're pitching her inside. Tries to drop a bunt. I think you don't mind trying to drop the bunt just to move the runner in scoring position if you can because on deck is Jasmine Macias and they intentionally walked her the last time at bat and something freaky made it happen. If they get bases loaded, you can't walk her then. One and two. Reynolds brings it. Caught over there by Ortiz on a lazy little line drive. Two down. Runners at the corner. Macias comes up, looking to get that hit. Trailing by three here in the bottom of the 11th. A little low. One and no pitch. Down the middle for a strike. Outfield straight away. I think she's seen the two pitches she wanted. Down off the plate. Tune one. Yeah, she has. And I think here's the thing too. If the ball is hit in the outfield for a base hit, you concede the run. You don't try to make a play. You throw to third. Keep runners there. Up the middle, base hit, throw right there. Six to four. She's good. She is good. She's an excellent ball player. She doesn't try and do too much with her swing. Exactly. I mean, she took what she was given. She wasn't trying to be the hero and tie the game up with one swing. Confidence in her team. She said, let me get this run across, make it a little bit easier. Yeah. And I like Natalie, who's up next. An excellent third base person for Cerritos. Type of player you'd want to have on your team. Type of player that you got the feeling that, you know what, I'm glad you're up there. She's an excellent glove at third base. Strike called because of a flinch of a front knee. And she's thinking, you know, it might be a mighty fine time for my first home run of the season. Now, that's what I'm thinking. She hits a gap or we're tied. It goes through. One run will score. Here comes the next run. All the way. They turn. They throw the plate. We're all tied up. <laughs> what a play. Again. In the outfield, just put the bat on ball. Is that a replay there, Ed? Uh, no, we were. But again, don't do too much. Take what they're giving you. Bat on ball, hit it to the outfield. They get into the outfield. And Jacobson, who's as sure-handed as any player we've seen in the last two years, bobbles it. Macias was confused at second, has enough speed to round third, and Cody was sending her all the way. So six to six is your score. Uh, With two outs and the winning run <laughs> is on second base. Are we in the bottom of the 11th? Yes. We're, we're someplace. <laughs> <laughs> and Corey again. This is going to drop. That's going to be the game. As Cerritos comes up with four big 
runs in the bottom of the 11th to beat Cyprus 7-6 here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Six runs, 14 hits, three errors for Cyprus. Seven runs, 11 hits, two errors for Cerritos. Cerritos comes away with a huge win today. Ed, it was a wild game. Cody's team once again pulls it off. Yeah, on our uh, little 20th anniversary, uh, we've got enough innings for two games. So two games here, one game in Santa Ana, three <laughs> games today. We gave you a triple header here on Sportsnet, USA.net, or at least the equivalent of one. There we go. For Ed, John, Corey, and myself, your Cerritos Falcons win it in the bottom of the 11th, 7-6 here on Sportsnet, USA.net.